can do hall spaces, dried spaces, fresh spaces. Damn it. Hi guys and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are doing our second ferment for our homemade kombucha. And now if you missed the first part of this video series, um, then you're definitely going to want to go check that out. I will link to it below this video. But in that first video, I show you how to actually get started brewing kombucha at home. So definitely check that out first if you have not done that yet. And then this part is all about doing the second ferment. So the second ferment is where things get really fun when it comes to homemade kombucha because this is the point where we start actually flavoring our kombucha. We're going to pretty much be able to fill up all these bottles here, which would probably be somewhere around $50 or $60 worth. For literally pennies, the couple scoops of tea and a little bit of sugar that we use to make our batches. And that's it. So super, super cost efficient. And you can really custom tailor the flavorings to fit your taste completely and do anything you want with them. And you can flavor your kombucha with everything from herbs and herbal teas and herbal tea blends to whole spices, dried spices, fresh spices, and fruits, all sorts of fruits. So you can do fresh fruits, um, frozen fruits, and we're going to be using some frozen fruits to flavor some of our kombucha today. Juices, applesauce, canned fruit, and then of course you can combine whatever flavors you like. I've got a link to a printable kombucha guide that you can get from my resource library under the kitchen and pantry resources section of my resource library. I walk you through the whole kombucha process in that and it's got a bunch of different flavoring combinations that I really like. Um, so if you're not sure how to flavor your kombucha, then make sure to check that out as well. I'll leave a link to that download below the video. But for today, we're going to be taking the batches that we made last week. I've got all these teas out because these are some of my favorite teas for flavoring my kombucha and then I also have a little bit of fruit that we're going to blend up and do some of that as well. Um, these teas, they're by Farmhouse Teas and they make all sorts of amazing tea blends both for getting started with your first ferment with kombucha and for your second ferment. But when you get to the second ferment and it's actually time to flavor it, you don't need to worry about that. That's why your options are kind of limitless and at that point we can use all sorts of herbal tea blends and different herbs and things like that to flavor. So I've got a few of my favorites by Farmhouse Teas um, that are actually made specifically for flavoring kombucha and we're going to be using some of these today as well as our fruit that I'm going to blend up. Last week we put our original SCOBY in. I don't know if you, oh yeah, you can kind of see it there. It's down at the bottom. So that is the SCOBY that we put in to get this batch started last week. This is now day seven. Now I find between day seven and 10 is really when I like to usually bottle mine. That's when I find that the flavor is good, but it's also developed enough that it is ready to bottle. It's gonna start um, carbonating in the bottle, which I'll talk about in just a sec, and bubbling and fizzing because it has really started that fermentation process. And another way that you know that is by the second SCOBY that forms. So since I filmed that last video, Seven days later, I've got this brand new SCOBY here and I've still got my original SCOBY down below that I originally used to ferment it. So I'm going to now take that and I'm gonna take the liquid from that and bottle it with my flavorings. I've got some lock top bottles and just some other, um, just some bottles with some screw on caps that make the bottles airtight. But I wanna put them in some glass airtight bottles. It's gonna to continue to ferment in the bottles and it's going to bubble up and create natural carbonation and that's what gives it that fizziness um, that almost is reminiscent of a soda pop. So first things first, I'm going to work, I've got a couple batches I'm going to do today. Here's the other one that I'm going to do and you can see again that big scoby that's in there and, and you can see all the little, I almost want to call them tentacles, <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but it's reproduced a new scoby on top. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my scobies in the SCOBY hotel so that all I have left in here is the liquid. Pop it down there and that's where it will live right now. Here now I always reserve a little bit of the liquid and put it back into the SCOBY hotel just so that there's um, so that I'm replenishing it. I'm giving those scobies something to feed off of and live in. They need to be in that liquid. 
Um, and then also so that when I go to start a new batch, I always have some starter liquid to start my new batch with. Okay, so when it comes to bottling, you don't actually have to flavor your kombucha. But of course, it's a lot more fun to add flavorings to it. So you want to start with airtight bottles, like I say. So these lock top bottles are pretty much the most popular choice for bottling kombucha. So I'm going to be doing all these different bottles today. And I think this is kind of what I'm estimating I'm going to need for these two batches here. We'll see what we got through. We're going to do a blended fruit blend. So we're going to do a triple berry blend of fruit. I usually do about a quarter cup for these 32 ounce bottles. Or if I'm doing a 64 ounce bottle, I'm just going to double it. So that's roughly half a cup of fruit but I eyeball it. It doesn't need to be precise. So I've just kind of taken like a little handful of strawberries, a little handful of blueberries, and a little handful of raspberries, and I'm gonna make a triple berry blend kombucha. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend that up to make it blend a little bit easier because this is frozen fruit that I'm using. I'm just gonna pour just a little bit of this kombucha in to give it some liquid. Then, just blend it up. take this and my funnel and I'm going to put this in the funnel so that I can actually funnel out some of those seeds and I've got this muddler as well which just you can just use the back of a spoon if you're gonna do this and filter out some of your seeds from your fruit um, but it just helps me to push down and get that pulp through or the juices through without getting the seeds and all that pulp put in about half a cup's worth of blended up fruit And I'm going to just go ahead and fill the bottle with my kombucha. Okay, so you can see all of the bubbles already. And top it up until there's, oh, about a half an inch to an inch of headspace at the top. Just going to wipe the top down and put my lid on. And that's it. That bottle, and you can see that beautiful uh, color from the berries, but that is ready to do its second ferment. So I make sure that the cap is tight on here. And then I'm just going to put this to the side, just like I did with my kombucha when I was doing the first ferment. I'm going to leave it on my counter. And I usually leave mine for around three days, I find, is a good amount of time. And what happens is while you're leaving it at room temperature, it's continuing to ferment, it's building up carbonation, and it's really taking on the flavor of whatever you've added in there to flavor it. Once it's finished, you can go ahead and put it in the fridge, and then that's going to really slow that fermentation process. So it's going to preserve it for longer um, without it continuing to build up a lot of carbonation. You do eventually want to put it in the fridge just to cool it down. so that I can do a few bottles at a time because we go through quite a bit of this. Those scobies away, so I'm gonna to continue to just fill up this bottle with my second batch. Top it off. Perfect. See that bubbling right at the top? Should give it a, just a wipe down first. And just, you know, just for your bottles, because I know this always comes up when I make kombucha, somebody always asks, do you need to sterilize the bottles? No, you do not. Just make sure they're clean and that's it. There is no risk of botulism or any type of you know harmful bacteria really when it comes to kombucha, especially because they're fermented and all that good bacteria that um, it is born out of the fermentation process kind of takes care of any bad bacteria that might get in there. It's very rare to have anything fermented kind of go wrong if you do the process right. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and do my last little growler here and finish up this really messy berry pulp juice thing got going on. Okay, 
So I'm just gonna give that a little wipe. Try to keep the liquid off from around the top of the bottle because it can kind of start to corrode the, the cap otherwise. Now for these bottles here, um, I'm going to flavor this batch here. I'm not sure if I'll get all three bottles, but I'm going to flavor these with some of my herbal tea blends. So there are so many fantastic flavors from the farmhouse teas. They make some more, oh, like this turmeric ginger peach. That's one of my favorites. This one, this is called roseberry and it's got organic hibiscus, elderberries, aronia berries and rose petals. Um, there's rosemary citrus, and then today we're going to be flavoring, I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna try this apple pie filling one, because I have not actually tried this flavoring yet, and that sounds divine. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do the strawberry mojito is another one of, it's my daughter's favorite. So I'm gonna make one of each, and then if I have enough to do a third bottle, then we'll do another flavoring. So for the herbal tea blends, um, I add about, about a tablespoon to a 32 ounce jar. I actually use my perfect teaspoon, which I showed you in the video on the first ferment. It's actually, I think it's about two teaspoons full, not quite a tablespoon, but I usually do kind of a, a heaping perfect teaspoon full. And I use these, I actually have multiple perfect teaspoons that I use for um, for making tea and for making kombucha and everything. So that's what I use when I'm making my batch, but you can just use a tablespoon if you want. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in whole. So this is the strawberry mojito, and I'm just gonna go ahead and dump that in there. Now I just go ahead and put the herbs in whole. I have tried putting them in like a tea bag before so that I could pull them out and not have all the little flakes of tea and stuff in there, but it did not work out well. I could not get the tea bag out of the top of the bottle. I find it easiest just to actually put the tea in whole and then just when I'm pouring it out I use that little um, strainer just to pour it through and it just filters out any of the herbal tea at that point. So I'm going to go ahead with my funnel and top it with my kombucha and you can see there's the kind of I don't know what to call it, like stringy bits that look like all, like almost the pulp from the SCOBY in here. Um, you can filter that out if you want. I just, I drink it. It's healthy for you. It's part of the SCOBY, so I just go ahead and put that right in. All right. So there's another batch right there. Good. Pop that lid on. Now, usually with the tea, because it's loose in there, um, I'll just gently blend it up. By doing this you don't want to shake it because again this is a naturally kind of carbonated beverage so you do need to be a little bit careful because um, if you do shake it it has a result similar to soda pop if you shake it and open that okay so for the second bottle I'm gonna do the apple pie flavoring I'm really excited to try this one and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing top it up with my kombucha. I'm hoping I have enough for this bottle, but I might not have quite enough to make it all the way to the top. We'll see. Oh, just, just perfect. It's a little bit lower. I could do a little bit more um, up to there, but that will work just fine. Perfect. Down. Yeah, just about an inch short there, but that's okay. It, it will um, carbonate just fine. The only reason headspace is important is just to make sure that it's got enough room to build up some carbonation without kind of exploding on you, but also um, so that it is close enough. Like if you only pour it to, to this level here, then that's going to be almost too much space for it to build up a good amount of carbonation, but this is just fine right here. And again, I'm just going to gently kind of incorporate that herbal tea mixture in there. You can see those bubbles already and just wait a few days and see what happens. And I'm just going to, again, just go ahead and put that to the side. What I do is I just line them up on my counter. I leave them there for a few days. Like I say, usually about three days is what I find is good. And then I throw them in the fridge and we usually enjoy them over the next kind of couple weeks. We would enjoy this batch. So you can see here though, so I have got from two batches of kombucha, um, which I used, I would have used about two, I think two tablespoons of tea per batch and a cup of sugar each. So four tablespoons, which is a quarter cup of tea altogether, and two cups of sugar. I mean, literally 
it's got to be under a dollar when you price that out and I got all of this kombucha plus I've got scobies that have multiplied and given me even more scobies to continue doing future batches as well. The other nice thing about kombucha, I constantly am losing these locked top bottles because it makes a really nice gift. Um, a housewarming or hostess gift is a really nice homemade gift that you can bring. There's just so many reasons that I think you should be brewing your own kombucha at home, especially if you buy it from a store, you are going to save so much money. This altogether would probably cost, like I say, around $50 to $60 worth were I to buy it from the store, and I've made it for essentially under a dollar or two. So like I said, I actually have a printable kombucha guide um, that you can download from the kitchen and pantry resources section of my free resource library, and it also has a bunch of different flavoring combos and options in there for you and I walk you through the process of how to get started brewing kombucha at home, where to get all of your supplies from and then again I have actually uh, done a full video where I show you how to do the first ferment and get started brewing kombucha so I will link both of those things below and I will also link to uh, farmhouse teas if you want to check them out like I say you can get tea to get started with your first ferment and a whole bunch of really delicious herbal teas to flavor your second batch as well so I will link to all those things below and if you like this video then make sure to hit like and subscribe below so that you never miss an update from the house and homestead mm -hmm.